I would like to preface this video with a couple of things. First off, this video will have spoilers. It's going to be difficult to argue for Nope if I can't talk about the main plot of the movie. Second off, I have never watched a Jordan Peele movie before this, so everything I say will have no bias towards or against Jordan Peele as a director. Now with that being said, here's why I think Nope is the biggest sleeper of the year. Hey, hey Ron, where are you? Where is a a Ron right now? When I first watched Nope, I came out of the theater thoroughly entertained, and I was excited to see what the world would think of it. I've never seen a Jordan Peele movie before, but I know that his past movies have been widely accepted. So what did I do? I went to Rotten Tomatoes to check. And what did I find? 69% on Rotten Tomatoes? For the audience score, the critic score was like in the 80s. That was, yeah, that was pretty good. 69%. That's a D plus. Are you kidding me? Where in this movie did you think this is below average? This is not good. That's insane. So I'm going to start out with what I believe is the strongest aspect of the movie, which would be the cinematography and the sound design. The cinematography in this movie is very impressive. There are many shots in this movie that feel like they could just be out of a nature documentary. It's a very beautiful movie. And apparently a lot of the night shots were actually filmed during the day. And it's all just camera work and, and light editing that makes it look like night. What it does is it adds more color to the screen, even though it's supposed to be super dark out. It's a very smart way of making a night scene remain dark and mysterious while at the same time allowing the screen to still be colorful and beautiful to look at. Also, the sound design in this movie, man. Whew. The sound design of Jean Jacket is brilliant. Towards the beginning of the movie, when he reveals himself, it's silent. And it's terrifying to just see this mysterious oval shape just no clipping through the sky. The silence of Jean Jacket makes it dreadful because he could be anywhere at any time and you won't know because he's so quiet. And when Jean Jacket finally decides to attack, it is a flurry of sound and craziness on screen. And you can hear the people screaming and moving from side to side in the theater. And their screams are so distorted. And when it's revealed what is happening to them, it is terrifying. This movie is able to instill that feeling of psychological terror without riddling the movie with jump scares. Now that's not to say that there isn't jump scares in the movie. There are quite a few and some of them are definitely cheaper than others. There is one fake out in the movie that I did really appreciate though. When the little kids were dressed up as aliens trying to scare the main characters, that was a terrifying scene, even though it's just kids in costumes. It's, at this point, the mystery of what's in the sky is still unknown. And so much alien sci-fi horror is like hyper-intelligent beings, you know, scientific aircraft. So you're assuming that there's someone's piloting some form of UFO spaceship. But the reveal of the kids doesn't feel like wasted screen time because the characters themselves are possibly expecting some form of hyper-intelligent life form. But the reveal that Jean Jacket is really just like an animal hunting is quite compelling, really. I'll be honest. When I first watched the movie, the scenes with the chimp confused me because the only real connection the chimp has to the main story is Ricky. And so I assumed that the scenes were just there to build Ricky's character, but it tells a deeper story about wild animals and how humans can't really control them. And once I learned that, I knew I had to make a video on this. Throughout the entirety of my life, I've always had a disdain for horror movies. A lot of the tropes that a lot of people seem to enjoy, I always found irritating and just uninteresting. Trope number one being an excessive use of jump scares. I find that an excessive use of jump scares makes a movie watching or even a video game experience unenjoyable. Be always being on edge and not being able to take in the artistry of the movie itself. 
And the second trope that I always hate is the stupidity of the main characters. If you ever watch like a Friday the 13th movie, or just any slasher film really, the characters always make terrible decisions. And when watching a horror movie, you often place yourself in that situation in your imagination. And when you see these characters make terrible decisions that get them into even worse situations just because of their decisions, you think, I would never do that. This is unrealistic. And it takes you out of the movie watching experience. So this is why Nope is so compelling. Because the main characters are really smart. They set up camera systems. They hide when they know they're being hunted. There's one point in the movie where the main character is in, his, is in a van. And he's right outside his own house. But he knows that Jean Jacket is nearby. He doesn't know exactly know where, but he knows that he's on the prowl. So instead of attempting to leave the van and run and scream into the house, he opens the door a crack, looks outside, sees the danger, immediately closes the door. Nope. Locks the door. I love that. He's not freaking out. He's not screaming and hyperventilating. He's keeping his composure. He's, you can tell that he's terrified. You can see it in his face, but he isn't overacting it. He is remaining calm in a very dangerous situation and making a smart decision. It's writing like this that keeps me ingrained in the movie and, and makes the movie more real. <sighs> My favorite person in the world responded to this movie rather interestingly. Logan Paul says, this is one of the worst movies he's seen in a long time. He says that it's objectively slow and confusing with stretch themes that don't justify the pace. He'll go on to complain and nitpick about things in the movie, like the, the mysterious metal objects falling on the main character's father at the beginning of the movie, along with uh, the, the more weirder characters like the uh, TMZ guy and the cinematographer being cryptic for cryptic sake or whatever. And here's my response to that. The movie is slow, yes. There is a lot of build-up time. There's a lot of character interactions. But this story isn't supposed to be really an adrenaline rush, even although there are times where you are very worried for the characters. But it's a very stylized movie. There's a lot of simple and dark humor thrown throughout the movie, Jordan Peele being the funny man that he is. The jokes land. They're fun. This movie is more than just watching people get sucked up by some magic gray sombrero in the sky. It's attempting to show instead of tell. It's a very powerful tool in cinema. When a movie's able to leave you with something instead of telling you what you should be left with, that's powerful. And I think Jordan Peele does that very well. So yeah, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you agree. If you don't, please let me know in the comments. And thank you for watching.